Hey everybody, welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I'm your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. the Bod Father. And today I have an awesome interview for you guys and gals that are out there listening. I have from the band Hellion, Miss Anne Bolin. She is the vocalist and they've been around for a while now. Anne, how's it going? It's going great. How are you doing? Doing awesome. I'm glad you're on the show. We can get Hellion out there a little bit more, even though you've been around for a long time. You've got a new album, well, it's a mini album that's coming out called uh, Karma's a bitch so <laughs> and it is karma really is <laughs> <laughs> it sure is <laughs> so what's some of your favorite tracks off this little mini album so far well i tell you it varies from day to day and i'm proud of every single one on that album yeah. it's hard to pick a favorite it, it really is because there are there are five really strong songs on there are you guys going to be uh, making a full length out with all these songs, or do you, you plan on doing another little mini album, or, or what, what do you guys have in store? Well, I, I tell you, the way that the industry is right now, it doesn't make a lot of sense to go and, and spend you know, $100,000 recording an album mm-hmm. when, when the return on the investment is so small these days. I mean, I'm committed, and the band is committed to quality rather than quantity. Mm-hmm. We've all been around for a long time. We all have a pretty you know, significant track record. So because of that, we're really going to focus more on quality than quantity. And if that means releasing singles or EPs instead of uh, an album that would be under budgeted, that's what we'll do. So it's safe to say that the digital age has pretty much really hurt bands putting out full links and things like that. I guess it's just because of the attention span of the fans, uh, more or less. Well, I wouldn't say that at all because I give a lot more respect to the fans than than a lot of people in the industry do right. i mean to me personally i'm a fan too right. and there's nothing that i enjoy more than you know especially back in the day going to a record store pulling a record off the you know the rack looking at the artwork opening it up checking out the lyrics looking at the pictures the people that helped make that record and you know then getting into the music opening that thing up putting it on and playing it from start to finish Mm -hmm. Because most artists, especially back in the day, we looked at the whole concept from start to finish. And even with this record, I agonized, and and Simon and the other guys agonized about what order should the songs go in? How is it going to tell a story? So that's ultimately what uh, an album or a piece of music should be about, is the whole the whole package not just you know one odd song so i'm very much into to creating something that's more than just just a, a song it, it, it's something that, that really tells a story yeah and so, plus and plus like i hope that said, answers your question but that's that's where i like to come from yeah and but plus like you said you know when you go to those record stores back in the day like that it, the the artwork is what grabbed my attention too uh, on a lot sure of these songs that you have out now on this little mini album, how is the fans reacting to them? Uh, getting a good response from them? The response has been better than ever, and I'm, it doesn't surprise me because I've got the very best lineup together that I've ever had. So I'm very proud of everybody in the band, and um, I, I wouldn't expect anything less from the fans, too, because you know they're, they're pretty educated. A lot of people may put down metal fans, but when it comes down to it, Metal fans are very knowledgeable, and they know a lot about the history of the bands they listen to. And we're all like family, too. We all stick together, fans and bands, all the same. So mm-hmm. that's for sure. How much growth, and I know you guys have been around for a while, you know, taking members out and members, things like that, but how much growth have you seen this band go from album to album? Well, I tell you, you know, when Hellion began, it was the first time I'd ever sang in a band. I was literally, uh, you know, green. Prior to that, of course, I, I played in a number of different bands, as mainly as a keyboard player, a little bit as a bass player, too. Mm-hmm. And uh, I went from a stage where at the beginning of the 80s, I was you know, playing in, in bands with a lot of people that were especially regionally well-known. And at that point in time, a number, a number of them were you know, upcoming, eBay and things like that. As, as a musician, I played. And so when we started Hellion, it was really um, just a for-fun project. I... Um, you know, I got together with some other musicians, and um, we just wanted to get out there and play. And we and we we decided to play cover tunes. We had previously all of us had played in original bands, but but we just wanted to get out and play. It was the summer of '82, and we just wanted to have some fun. Um, when it came down to trying to find a vocalist, that was always a problem, and uh, we just decided that we'd take turns doing it. You know, so 
uh, initially, like anybody else that starts off and you know, learning a new instrument, some of my performances were admittedly less than stellar, as with the whole band. So that was obviously a, a big growth, you know, time for us. And of course, we went in and re, you know, when we recorded the first mini album, it was just really, really, really low budget, just going in and and um, you know, just recording as fast as we possibly could. And luckily, there was some kind of magic there. You know, the the songs were well received by the public, and and what ended up being that demo that was rejected by all the American record companies ended up being released in the UK and it went up to number six on the album charts over there. So uh, that was a that was really a, a bit of luck. Then what uh, what I've got to say is, you know, of course, after that, there was the really big bit of luck, which was uh, when we were contacted by Ronnie James Dio and he wanted to to help us take that music uh, one step farther. So there were a number of, you know, growth periods that the band went through. And um, that's why I'm particularly happy with the the Italian and back anthology because it pretty much shows all, all of that mm-hmm. to the, and, and, and up to the present. Right. Ronnie James Dio, he was a huge influence on you. And, you know, he told you to stay with your music and, and, and focus on your vocals and stuff like that. How much, sure. of, an, how much of an impact, and did that make on you? Well, for a start, for a start um, you know, when I started singing, there really weren't any female singers in heavy rock or metal that I knew of, at least at the time. There may have been people overseas and things like that, but they were respected. Mm-hmm. It was always regarded as kind of a dog and pony show when there was a female that was singing heavy music. They were either expected you to, you know, have some kind of gimmick, whether it was the S and M thing or whether it was, you know, blowing up TVs or whatever, whatever it was. Mm-hmm. It just pretty much seemed that unless you were pretty much mainstream, and I, I mean, no disrespect to the mainstream people in the heart group with Mac, things like that, because they're excellent, excellent singers and performers. If you were, you know, took things a little bit heavier beyond that, um, it was pretty much a, much a joke when there were bands with female singers in it on, on the large part. So, he gave me a lot of encouragement with so far as both my singing and my songwriting. And um, he said, you know, there's a whole lot of different keyboard players, you know, that's, uh, uh, but there are very few singers that have the ability to, to write lyrics and, and songs and who have a distinct voice that is recognizable. And he encouraged me to focus on my singing as opposed to keyboards. So it's, it's you know, it's an alter, it altered my, <laughs> the course of my life. And you guys, you guys quit playing there for a while after he passed. I mean, Ronnie James Dio, his voice is phenomenal. I mean, there's not another vocalist that can touch him. I mean, he, no, I you know, I hear all these great stories from everybody. I wish I could have got to met the guy because, I mean, he's definitely made an impact on me with metal music. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, God bless him. I mean, we, we still think of him to this day. Yes, absolutely. Me too. After, after Ronnie passed, I was approached by... Um, a number of different people that were putting together um, a big Ronnie James Dio tribute band that was going to record and tour in Japan. And I'd been over to Japan previously and, and I uh, love the people of Japan and, and uh, look forward to sometime going back over there. But they wanted to do uh, a traveling tribute to Ronnie and they asked me to sing in it and also record his music. Now it was very soon after he passed and I was, very um, torn up and emotional about his passing. Mm -hmm. And I just did not think that it was respectful for myself to go out and make money uh, after and because of his death. So I turned that down and um, I still think it was the right decision. I just, uh, I I didn't feel right about it then. And uh, it it just, it just seemed wrong. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's uh, people ask why, and, and uh, that, that's why. So, and you know, I think that's a great, a great stance to take. Yeah, it just you know he he was you know uh, it was a situation. For example, I had went in and, and done shows with Detente, uh replacing Don Crosby, who I, when it comes to thrash music, I think is the, probably the best ever that there there ever was. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, not only did she have a great voice, but she had great lyrics and uh, was a great performer. So, um, but I didn't know her. She was not my mentor. She was not, uh, you know, she wasn't Ronnie James Dio. Right. So it was it was a totally different situation. 
I want to throw this out there because I, th- this part is actually really cool. And I, I'm into ghost hunting and things like that, but this is actually really cool from what I was reading here. Hellion's first gig was on July 4th of 1982 at your home, affectionately known as yeah. Annieville Horror House. Because, uh, yep. <laughs> let's talk about this. What happened there? Well, the house was um, a house that had been around for a long time. You guessed that it was built in the 1920s, which overseas isn't very old, but in America it certainly is. And um, it was haunted. There was no doubt. Anybody that ever lived up there, there was things that were happening that were just uh, unbelievable. So it had developed a reputation of, of being haunted. And a couple of the universities had actually sent their Ghostbuster teams when they had them back in the 60s mm-hmm. uh, to check out the house with all their equipment and all that kind of stuff. So it had quite a reputation. And since my name was Anne and since a lot of people... Uh, particularly British people like to call me Annie, and the band that I was in originally at, at the house when I took it over uh, were mainly British, so uh, it just became affectionately known as the Annie Joel Horror House. That's awesome. In honor of the movie, you know, Amityville. <laughs> That's cool, though. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of good times, a lot of good times up there for sure. And I won't throw this out there, too, before we get a little bit more into to Haley Young and Plus You. You guys toured in 1988 over in Europe to promote the album Postcards from the Asylum. This is, this this really intrigued me because I'm I'm a huge Metallica fan. You guys actually correct me if I'm wrong on this, but you guys actually toured in the bus that Cliff Burton had passed away in. Is that correct? Yes, yes, wow. we did. And to make to make matters even uh, uh, more unusual and unpleasant, we had guys from the same road crew. Yeah, that yeah. is insane. So, that's how we found out that it was the same bus, because when we, we went to get on the bus, uh, Tony Smith, uh, Big Nick, it was the sound guy, still probably is the sound guy, uh, they recognized the bus immediately. And I, I think that the portion of bunks where Cliff had died had been pulled out, so it, it uh, slept nine instead of slept uh, 12. So, um, yeah, that was the same bunk or the same uh, bus. That is crazy. Oh, wow. Plus your house being haunted, now the bus, I mean... <laughs> well, the bus wasn't haunted, but, you know, it's, it was a very unfortunate situation. Yeah. It was, just, it was a unfortunate situation also that um, we happened to be, you know, given the, you know, our crew, which at that time, like I said, we shared Metallica's road crew in 88 and Sandman and everything else. Um, it was just unfortunate that that particular bus happened to be assigned to one band with the same crew guys that had been working with Metallica. Yeah. What was it for you, Anne, that said... Okay, I want to be a musician. What was that spark for you? Well, I don't know what, what it was because I started playing music as long as early as I can recall. You know, there's pictures of myself that my mom took, and that I was probably in kindergarten, and I've got, uh, you know, pla- not plastic, but cardboard cutout guitar. And actually, I should take, yeah, I think I do have a cardboard cutout guitar and a mic stand that's made out of paper toys. Nice. And, um, yeah, it's, it's pretty funny. I got the tripod mic stand right there with the Tinker Toys. And I must have been probably five. I think we all had those little dreams when we were young. <laughs> you know, and, and it just continued, you know. Yeah. I mean, it just continued from cardboard things to, you know, pounding on an acoustic piano to pounding on an electric piano to, you know, pounding on, you know, getting the bass and learning that and learning, um, you know, getting a Hammond organ, a church organ and beefing it up and, on it goes, you know, fighting the first PA, all those kind of things that you do when you're a musician, it's never stopped. When Hellion first started out, I know you guys, I know you said that you guys were doing some cover songs and things like that, but when you started to do your own music, uh, how was the support? Did you get a lot of support from the uh, from the, little, uh, the community and stuff like that? Absolutely. I mean, even that first show at, uh, that we did at um, uh, 4th of July in, two, or in 2009, what am I talking about? <laughs> um, 1982. Uh, I think we played, it must have debuted Nightmares and Daylight and a couple of other songs up there. I mean, we're playing originals from the start. Yeah, and the response was always, always really good. I mean, we must have made a demo a month or two into our existence. Mm-hmm. Of, not with original music. If you could choose one Hellion song that could describe you perfectly, which one would it be, if any? Oh, boy. It changes from time to time, you know? Yeah. I'm, I'll always be proud of Break the Spell. I think that was kind of our breakthrough song. Screams in the Night, I remain proud of that. But I tell you, I, of all of those songs, which you know, which we've done over the past years, I think this new stuff is, is the best that they've ever been. I mean, I really love um, Betrayer. It's just got so many, many different um, 
angles to it. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it, it's got a little bit of thrash in the middle of it. It's got, you know, classic hard rock elements. And uh, it, it's, it just, it, to me, is a really, really excellent song. I mean, they're all, all, all so good. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm so proud to be working with these guys. The, the little mini album, Karma's a Bitch, it, it's it's really still a throwback to you guys, and you guys have not lost your sound. And that's what I like, and that's why I cannot stress enough for bands. You know, yeah, push the envelope, but stay true to your sound. But I, I'm a huge fan of, like you said, of y'all's first album, uh, actually first, um, I don't think it's your first album, but uh, Break the Spell from 83, from uh, Up in the Depths. That is one of yep. my favorite songs by you guys. Yep, yep, and that was done so fast. I mean, it was literally, we had get recorded a demo, uh, we shopped it in America. America, of course, you know, they weren't, didn't, 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 didn't get a record deal out of it, put it that way. And um, overseas, they liked it. And we were told to go record two more songs and make the four-song demo into a six-song mini-album, uh, which we did. And literally, I, I got back from, from doing the deal in, in the UK, and I think we were in the in the studio the the next weekend mm-hmm. and that was with two fresh songs meeting up from i think it that was up from the depth i believe it was fire and break the spell might have been from the depths and break the spell i don't don't think i'm going to call at this point but i remember it was uh we we're supposed to record two and we and then recorded did three and it was just super super fast so um but the good performances came out and that's uh that's what mattered how crazy is it when things like that happen? I mean, you could put out like the most fastest album like I recorded in, in 20 minutes. I'm just throwing stuff out there, guys. I really don't have it that way, but I'm just throwing it out there. And and it be one of the best albums. You know what I'm saying? And then you could take like a year and a half to do an album and, and it's not as good. You know what I'm saying? It's just crazy. Oh, absolutely. There's something about capturing the moment in the yeah. time that, that's priceless. I mean, that that recording of ours that we initially recorded as as a demo it climbed to number six on the, the charts, the rock charts in England. So oh. that, that was a, a prime example of one of those situations where you had no idea how successful it was going to be. And you're going, whoa. So. And for the people that have not got to see you guys yet, and shame on you if you have not, what can fans expect at a show from Hellion? Well, first of all, got some of the best musicians in heavy rock and, and metal in the world that are playing in band right now. Um, Simon Wright, of course, you know, if, you, if you're a fan of heavy rock and you don't know Simon Ryan, so yeah, you might have to check yourself in somewhere. Um, you know, ACDC, DO, UFO, uh, currently also works with uh, Jeff Tate and, and um, Operation Mind Crime, which is the, the new, new name for his band. Uh, I can go on and on with, with Simon's uh-huh. credits because they're, they're pretty much a history of rock and roll. Uh, Scott Warren, who uh, not only played in, in DO, also played in Triple Negative and uh, also was the hunting guy in um, Heaven and Hell um, behind the, the, wherever they put him, <laughs> behind the curtain to play <laughs> keyboard. George Delevo from Rhino Bucket is joining us as a special guest rhythm guitar player. He's also a great lead singer in his own right with Rhino Bucket. So that's just going to be an added bonus. He's going to do some backup vocals to help me out and uh, also help with the crunchy guitar stuff underneath Max. We've got Maxwell Carlisle, who is a, a young guitar player that you're going to be hearing a whole lot more about. Um, he's, he's just truly excellent, and I was very fortunate to find him. And, of course, uh, we've got Greg Smith, who has been in uh, Black Morse Rainbow, been in um, Alice Cooper, Gloria Stercold, Wendy O. Williams. Uh, he currently plays also in Ted Nugent's band. The list goes on and on and on. So, mm-hmm. you know, to, to make, uh, for starters, if you like great playing, there you go. And, um, you know, I won't talk about my own, own self, but uh, I, 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 other than to say that I think I've got a different different kind of voice than, than anybody else who's out there that's a female lead singer. You do. And it, it, it's, it fits metal perfectly. Thank you. And it really does. I'm not saying it because you're on here, but that's the God's honest truth. You know, there's some out there that I just have to step back and go, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, hey, you know, they're they're doing it. They're making an effort. I give them A for effort, so. Yep. How much is writing a relief for you? Oh, it's it's very important. I mean, I was thinking about this the other night. Um, what 
how how therapeutic writing music and writing anything can be. Mm-hmm. I mean, this sounds silly, but but I was really disturbed recently by a number of posts on Facebook which concerned bullying. And um, I don't know whether you know about this, but one of our, our former musicians, a bass player by the name of Teddy Days, committed suicide short, shortly after being bullied very, very bad on, on Facebook. Wow. No, and, um, yeah, this happened last summer. And it was re- very disturbing. The post got, um, as I followed them, I was very disturbed. And I, I usually don't respond to anything like that. And I finally decided that I needed to do that. And I felt so much better after just taking the time to put some thoughts, uh, you know, on, on paper, but um, post some thoughts about how I felt about all those things and, and about how horrible bullying was and how I don't care what excuse you have, whether you were abused as a kid or, or anything like that. It's, it's, it's not okay. It is not okay to bully and treat people badly. So just, just the, the idea of going through and taking that uh, exercise in writing your thoughts down, it, it made me feel a lot better. So, yeah, I think it's, it's very, very therapeutic. And what's it mean to you guys uh, when a fan comes up and says, hey, your music has helped me out through over the years. It's pulled me out of dark hole. And plus, it's gave me, uh, you know, hope. What, what do you say to that? Um, I'm honored. I'm honored any time somebody comes to my shows. You know, so, uh, and when a fan comes up, or I call them friends, but somebody comes up and, and, and makes a comment like that, it's, it's, uh, it's very touching and it's meaningful. And, and it kind of makes, uh, oftentimes, it seem worthwhile because, of course, any any person that's in the music business, we go through ups and downs ourselves. So when somebody comes up to us and says that, and it's usually more 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 than that. It's usually typically, you know, they'll come up with a, a story about something that's happening to them and how they heard the song or something. And uh, it's always, it's it kind of makes it worthwhile, the hard stuff that you go through as a musician so mm-hmm. and a performer. So, yeah, it's, it's meaningful to us as well. Well, thank you for taking time out to do this interview as a fan. Thank you guys for your music over the years, Ann. Well, thank you so much as well. Thank you for supporting it. We wouldn't be here if there weren't people that supported it. I keep saying it, everybody, if it's not for the fans, they none of these bands would be here today, so we got to start somewhere. Um, yeah. Okay. You guys are getting ready to kick off your tour October 2nd in California at the Whiskey A Go-Go in Los Angeles, California, I should say. And it's going to go over into, I think, January. Is that right, or am I wrong? Oh, it's going to go through the end of October. It goes uh, last show is October the thirty first. Okay. And then we're we're working on booking right now shows in uh, two thousand fifteen as well, and awesome. maybe even in late uh, uh, at the end of this year too. Everybody, please pick up the little mini album "Karma's a Bitch." Support Hellion. They are the the, the forefathers of metal, speed metal, uh, of that genre. Trust me. Great band. And before I let you go, how can people stay in touch with you guys uh, to buy your merch, buy your tickets? How can you do that? Well, a couple of different great ways. We've got a, a, a website, which is www.hellion.us. And uh, right now, until the tour, we're offering a free download every day of some of the classic Hellion songs. So that should give you a idea to go there. And all they have to do is enter their email address, and uh, they get that, and and we send out a you know newsletter, short little updates, not not anything horrible, long or anything like that, uh, frequently. Oh, we've also got a Facebook um, page, uh, which you just you know search out Hellion and we'll be there, and also a uh, a Twitter account which is Hellion Official, uh, on just like it is H E L L I O N O F F I C I A L, and. Um, it's a great ways to do it, and we really, really appreciate the um, the involvement of, of the you know the people that come in, our friends that, that visit that. And I have to say also, that if it wasn't for I think the involvement and support that we've received on Facebook, particularly, um, I don't think the tour would be possible or anything else. It's it seemed to have been self generating pretty much. So literally, there were a bunch of people on Facebook that were asking for shows, and uh, Ironically, there, there was a booking agent that happened to be looking at our page when a bunch of people were asking about shows, offered their services. It's Jan and ATI. And uh, what started off initially was uh, as for a couple shows here and there because a lot of people, quite frankly, didn't think that people would be interested in Italian after the years. 
I evolved into five shows. And five shows have evolved into ten shows, and ten book shows have evolved into fifteen, into twenty. <laughs> and now we've got you know, you know, offers coming in from the festivals overseas and all kinds of stuff. So, so um, I I credit the the people, especially the people that were active on Facebook for all that. That's awesome. Social media making an impact on bands today to day. Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. And before I let you go, will you care to do a promo for my show? Absolutely. Just say this is Ann Bowen from the band Hellion, and you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Hi, this is Ann Bowen from the band Hellion, and you are listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Everybody stick around. We got some music coming up from the band Hellion. Like I said, go out and pick Karma's A Bitch. Pick that CD up, and okay, go out and support Hellion when you can. Check them out on the road as well, starting October 2nd. You will hear these interviews right here on Bod's Mayhem Hour and Uber City Radio, and God bless you and thank you. Thank you very much. I I really appreciate it.